Welcome back. Now we will start the second talk of uh, this part of ICU Linguistic Colloquium. Uh, let me introduce the second speaker, Dr. Olusheye Adesola. Olusheye is a senior lecturer of Yoruba and African Studies at Yale University. Uh, he holds a PhD in linguistics from Rutgers University. Uh, he teaches Yoruba courses at a multiple level at uh, Yale, and he's also the associate director of the African and Afro project at Rutgers University. Uh, he's published multiple articles on Yoruba uh, language, Yoruba studies, and linguistics in general. Uh, and he works on various uh, issues, uh, uh, such as comparative syntax, uh, statistics, African history, Yoruba culture and literature, second language acquisition, Africa and its diaspora, and uh, various syntactic theory uh, related to constructions such as anaphora, double H movement, or focus construction. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I met Shea at Rutgers when I was a first year st uh, PhD student, and uh, he was a big senpai <laughs> for me when I was uh, studying at Rutgers. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, he was always like, uh, kind of taking care of a, a brother kind of big brother feeling <laughs> doing the in the African linguistics so it's really uh, good to have you here at the Africa uh, ICU link African linguistics series and uh, today uh, he will talk about uh, on on resumptive pronouns in Yoruba welcome oh thank you for inviting me uh I'm gonna share my screen and then we'll take it from there yes <laughs> Uh, everybody see the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to us briefly about resumptive pronouns in Yoruba. Uh, the subject of resumptive pronouns is not new. People have been working on this for about 50 years now, uh, since Ross 1967 uh, to now, there have been many analysis on uh, resumptive pronouns. But today I'll be focusing on elements of uh, the constructions in Yoruba. Basically, while doing this, I would attempt to answer some of the questions on the screen. What does Yoruba re uh, require resumptive pronouns? Why do we have resumptive pronouns in place of uh, XPs that are moved? And why is it the case that even though the element that was moved is uh, either plural or singular, why is it the case that the language doesn't require agreement? between what is moved and uh, what is used in place of it. And, and in some other instances, we also see cases in which agreement is required between the moved element and the resumptive pronoun. I will try to answer some of this as we continue. But before I lay out uh, that, I want to show you briefly what the pronoun system in Yoruba looks like. The pronoun system in Yoruba is not very complicated, but um, sometimes it takes a little closer look to get uh, the minute details. Yoruba has strong pronouns and would pronouns, but most of what I will talk about today will be on um, pronouns, but you could extrapolate that also to uh, strong pronouns. Uh, when we talk about pronouns, generally, we are talking about variables that are supposed to have five features like persons, gender, number, animate, or so on and so forth. For example, in English, if you take the pronoun E, uh, it's supposed to be third person singular, it's uh, masculine, and then it's also animate. Whereas if we do that with Yoruba, then you see that we have less uh, five features um, uh, on the pronouns. For example, uh, O in O today has only two features. It doesn't have gender feature, it doesn't have animate feature. It's only uh, specified for number and person. So, Generally, people talk about pronouns. Pronouns are used to keep track of reference that people have talked about in the, uh, in the discourse. For example, in uh, sentence number one in English, I spoke with John yesterday. He said that I should give you $10. Basically, he has an antecedent because we talk about John before everybody understand what that means. In the same way, if I say I spoke with John and Peter yesterday, they said that I should give you $10. They, as antecedent in John and Peter, everything is okay. But if I said, I spoke with John and Peter yesterday, he said that I should give you $10. That's a little confusion, why? Because he is not 
the same uh, number with John and Peter, which is supposed to be plural. Then the sentence crashes. Uh, the same way for Yoruba, I mobile John Soroniana, only came from one dollar mewa. The answer, the sentences are settable. There's agreement in number and person between John and, uh, and E. The same thing for number five, in which case, Joanna at the And then one being a plural pronoun is an agreement with uh, Joanna and Peter. Uh, but if you look at number six, then Joanna and Peter, mobile Joanna at the Soroniana, only came from dollar mewa. The sentence is bad, why? Because the uh, pronoun there is not in agreement with its antecedent if they were to be understood on the boundary. So the conclusion from that would look like something saying every pronoun is expected to agree a number antecedent with this and uh, a number feature with its antecedent. So this doesn't say anything about presumptive pronoun, but it laying groundwork for us to understand how pronoun system work generally in the language and also maybe in other languages. Um, so why do we get resumptive pronoun? Basically, there have been a lot of uh, different analysis. Like I said before, people started working about the, on this, like maybe for about 50 years now, and there's been a different kind uh, diverse analysis on what they look like. But the basic thing would be, uh, they are pronouns that are used to replace moved element. For example, uh, if I say Olugba Iwiojo as a number seven, you can say uh, Tani Olugba Iwiojo, in which re is the resumptive pronoun for ta, which is move, the most element in the uh, question. The same thing happened in focus construction. If you say, Ujoni Ulugbae Were, the expectation is that re there is a pronoun that is used in place of the element that was moved. In which case, uh, in seven and eight, uh, re being the pronoun agrees in number with uh, the antecedent, Ujo and Ulu, which are both singular. Um, but if you look at it more closely in Yoruba though, the question then is, do we have agreement with pronouns that are used in place of moved element every time? The answer is no. As you look at number nine, you have Ola ni Ola Ishu, which is good, why? Because Ola and uh, O is third person, singular, everybody's happy. But for num num nine B, you have a sentence like Ola Tiade ni Ola Ishu. The sentence is acceptable, even though Ola and Ade are supposed to be plural, whereas uh, the third person singular pronoun O is in the resumptive position. So the question then is, why is this acceptable? If, as we saw in the previous example, there's supposed to be an agreement between a pronoun and its an antecedent. This is the question I'm gonna try to ask, answer today and then try to see if we can have other languages that exhibit similar uh, pattern. Okay, so in this talk today, I'm gonna call those that do not agree with the antecedent as a non-agree resumptive pronoun. And those that agree with the antecedent will be called uh, agreeing resumptive pronoun. So this is in person, it could also be in numbers in question, uh, sentence number nine, C, awa ni ora ipo, in which case awa is first person, but uh, O is a third person pronoun. And is did resumptive in that case. Okay, so uh, the case is then, is it every time that when you use uh, a resumptive pronoun in subject position that doesn't agree? Maybe not. We also find the same thing in other contexts, but more importantly, if it were in non-subject position, agreement is required, like in 10A. Adia Teolu, ni answer or ni In this case, Adia Teolu is plural, and then one is also plural pronoun that is used to, uh, as a resumptive pronoun for idea to that was moved from that uh, con uh, complex. Now, idea to answer on pare will have been a version of the non agreeing pronoun if re was allowed because re is third person singular, but it's not acceptable. Why? Because there's supposed to be an agreement. So what does this tell us? Basically say, if you move from a non-subject position in the language, agreement is required. If you move from a subject position, agreement is not required. The question is why, but we can we get to that as we continue. So, um, talking about 
horizontal pronoun is not something peculiar to Yoruba. Like I said before, people have been working on this for so long. Ross, 1967, Borea, 1984, Shlonsky, 1992, uh, up to even late last year, I'm really 2021. So there'll be a lot of analysis based on different languages and what people observe in different languages and the pattern, so to say. Uh, for some researchers like Borea 1984, uh, horizontal pronouns are not derived through movement, but if you look at accounts from our own 20, 2001, uh, horizontal pronoun is derived through movement. For some others like Sunak 1998, actually, horizontal pronouns are just by mag. So to say uh, one way or the other is like there's a lot of parametric variation in how horizontal pronouns are viewed in the literature. But what matters, at least to uh, me for today, is to account for how there's a green horizontal pronoun in some cases and some that are non agree in the same language. Um, there have been a lot of cl uh, clarification about which type of system a language has, for example, uh, it has been said since March 2004 that languages vary in how they use something pronouns. Some don't use it at all, some use it a lot. For example, those that do not show WH uh, case alternation use it a lot. And like I said before, I think Yoruba belongs in that group. Um, one of other observations that maybe we might be uh, able to underline now is that some actually think that horizontal pronouns are basically the same thing as regular pronouns that we use in uh, resumptive uh, positions. This could be correct to the extent that they are agreeing with the antecedent and also that they have no other morphological uh, di distinct form. And for Yoruba, for example, there's no other distinct morphological form for resumptive pronoun different from regular pronouns. So yeah, it would be, yes, maybe they're the same, except maybe there's some um, features or properties or patterns that show them to be a little bit different. And for all intents and purposes, when people work on horizontal uh, pronouns, that maybe they're talking about um, relativization, they're talking about plastic gap, they're talking about focus constructions, WH movement, and so on and so forth. And most of the time when the horizontal pronouns are used, they are used to co as covering, to cover uh, as, a, uh, as a placeholder for a, a gap that was created after, some, after something was moved. So for the sentence not to be bad, horizontal pronouns are used and then sentence is better. This is not the same in every language. For example, at the point in time, uh, it's been reported that horizontal pronouns also make English sentences better when there's a movement from Ireland, but uh, in, in most recent research has been shown that this is not actually uh, mostly Correct, especially when we look at production. Okay, um, I'm going to recap basically that Yoruba's uh, non horizontal pronoun and horizontal pronoun is not very too much different from others, but both options are available. Um, for horizontal pronoun that is not agreeing, the basic claim that I'm going to be uh, attempting to establish is that. The non horizontal pronoun is used simply for EPP purposes, for standard projection uh, principle purposes. Basically, that uh, it must a sentence must have a subject. Uh, there have been a, uh, several analyses in the literature about how to account for the occurrence of the non horizontal pronoun in Yoruba. For example, if you look at the work of Pulley Blank, 1986, and Castings, 1986, uh, it's uh, said that the reason why Yoruba uses resumptive pronoun subject position is because the position is not governed, antecedent government is not available, and to avoid violating uh, empty category principle, a, a pronoun is taking that position. And, Analysis that's a little bit related to that, but not exactly the same thing is, in, is found in Adewale 1998, claiming that, oh, there's no problem with that. The only problem, the only issue is that critics in general, they're not required to agree with the antecedent. And then uh, that is why Yoruba has non agreed resumptive pronoun in that position. And for the chain 1993, is like 
um, the non-agreement resumptive pronouns, just like the atone syllable that is used to mark uh, non-feature tenses in the language. And for Awoblu in 1999, it's actually not a pronoun, it's just an adverb that is used in the language. So basically for this uh, presentation today will be that using a third person uh, as a pronoun in the non, in the subject position as called a uh, non agree resumptive pronoun is actually better economically than to use an agree resumptive pronoun. I'm also gonna be showing that the reason why this is the case is because Yoruba uses a uh, non, non-operator movement, which in any case uh, is not able to satis satisfy the EPP requirement of the tense. And that is why uh, a resumptive pronoun that is non agree is uh, inserted at in the phonetic level. So the non agree resumptive pronoun is uh, inserted by Madge at EPP for EPP purposes. And then we're also going to see from other languages how this uh, comes up in the languages and then we'll see if we can extend whatever analysis we have for Yoruba to those languages. Uh, but all said and done, your uh, horizontal pronoun is used very widely in Yoruba to the extent that uh, it's actually contributing to the uh, elimination of island effect in the language and also affects the fact that Yoruba doesn't exhibit weak crossover effect. So let me give some basic introduction about the data of distribution of uh, resumptive pronouns, and then we'll continue later on. So if you look at the sentences uh, from 11 to 16, you see instances in which for each possible position, the subject uh, position, there are two options possible in the language. For example, if you look at number 11, first person, uh, a minimal lot, New York. It's first person, the, the resumptive pronoun is also first person, everybody's happy. Uh, 11 prime, a mini Ulo, New York. Uh, it is first person, but the resumptive pronoun is third person. So there's no agreement, but yet the sentence is correct. Um, 12, the same pattern for second person, uh, it won't you learn New York. Uh, and then for 12 prime, it won't you learn New York. Third person is used instead of second person. The sentence is correct. Uh, this actually was supposed to be glossed as second person singular, not second person plural. Um, comparing all those with other uh, person and number, we have the same pattern in which case for each number 14, 15, 16, uh, the antecedent agrees in number with the ante uh, the pronoun agrees in number with the antecedent, but the 14 prime, 15 prime, and 16 prime the uh, pronoun does not agree in number with the antecedent. For example, in 16, for example, we have a uh, first person plural, but the uh, uh, presumptive pronoun 16 prime is third person singular, and yet the sentence is correct. Uh, so this shows us that in Yoruba language, in the, in the language, there's a free variation, like, like, it's, like there's an option between either using a resumptive pronoun that, that agrees in the subject position or use a non-resumptive pronoun or a non agree resumptive pronoun. This will, in, in principle, uh, be like a contract to what is reported for Irish, in which case there's a different variation there, gaps and uh, resumptive pronouns. For Yoruba, it's resumptive pronouns agree and those that are not agree. So let me uh, pinpoint where this is uh, seen in the structure of the sentences in the language. Uh, resumptive pronoun generally are used when gaps are not allowed. So when gaps, where gaps are disallowed, that is when resumptive pronouns are used in the language. For example, if you look at uh, sentence number 17, kini adiora, in this, case, we have a sentence in which um, content question key is moved to the uh, external antecedent position of knee, and then there's a gap. The sentence is perfectly acceptable because a gap is uh, acceptable in that context. But con uh, compare that with 17 prime, in which case kini and then there's a resumptive pronoun in the object position of ra, the sentence is bad. The same thing happens to 
uh, focus in focus constructions in the language agania deora. If there was a resumptive pronoun in place of the object that was moved, the sentence will be bad, as in 18 prime. Uh, we can say the same thing for shared object of uh, serial verb constructions in the language like kini olura kwaje. That would be perfectly acceptable, but if you put a resumptive pronoun at the position where ki was moved, kini olura kwaje, the sentence is bad. Uh, the same thing we apply to object of verbs with CP complement, kini uluso kweadera. If you were to put a resumptive pronoun there and we have kini uluso adera, then the sentence is bad. Why? Because in all this instance and all others that uh, a gap is allowed, it is more economic to use a gap in the production of the sentence than to use a resumptive pronoun. That is why all those sentences are bad. So the reverse is what we have on the screen now, in which case uh, re resumptive pronouns are required in Yoruba where gaps are excluded. Usually, most of that will be in island post uh, constructions or in island positions, but the first one is in local subject like Tani Ora issue, which is a little bit different from the other ones that we'll see after the first sentence in 22. So in 22, Tani Ora issue is acceptable, but if, if we were to say 22 prime, Tani Ra issue, the sentence is absolutely uh, uh, unacceptable in the language. Why? Because a gap is not accepted in the subject position. Uh, object of complex proposition also do not allow a gap after the extraction, like 22, 23 prime is in unacceptable. Adeni asoro nipa. Whereas if you were to put a resumptive pronoun there, then the sentence is good. Adeni asoro nipa. Complex noun phrase is also another instance in which a gap is not acceptable after in after movement or extraction. Oluni uh, omabrinti ori waniana is acceptable because you put a resumptive pronoun there after always moved. But if it was a gap as in twenty four prime, then the sentence is bad. Oluni uh, omabrinti ori waniana. Okay. The same thing applies to coordinate stru structure, in, uh, like, more like what you call coordinate structure constraint. Basically, uh, if you extract a part of a conjunct, then you have to put a resonant pronoun piece of it. If, you put, if it's the gap, then the sentence is bad. Oluni ujuati on rishade is acceptable, but if I were to say oluni ujuati da 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 rishade, then the sentence is bad. The same thing applies to WH islands. Like, okay, if I were to say something like 26, Olu atiade ni mobile kini wara. That is acceptable. Why? Because one replaces uh, the uh, moved element. Whereas if I were to leave a gap as in 26 prime, then the sentence is bad. Olu atiade ni mobile kwe kini wara. And then there's a gap there. So summary, gaps are not allowed inside and allowed, but this is not peculiar to Yoruba. This has also been observed in the literature for a long time now, uh, since Pamunta 1972, uh, Peseski 1988, and other people have worked on this severally. And languages do use different strategies to repair uh, gaps that are left uh, seen in an island. One of it is resumption. Some use uh, non-agreement, some uh, use uh, different complementizers and so on and so forth. And then this also say movement is not allowed here, but if you have to do movement, then we resort to a repair strategy. In this case, resumption. Uh, this is uh, another thing that's related to this is that in the Yoruba language, uh, there's also a case in which uh, using a resumptive pronoun can actually also elevate um, with crossover effect, just like you saw with islands in the previous uh, examples, in which case uh, so sentences that were not supposed to be good, they, there was no resumptive pronoun, were good. Why? Because a resumptive pronoun was used. In this case, um, who does is mother-like, it's not acceptable. Why? Because uh, the pronoun is bound to a, the variable is bound to a pronoun to its left. 
and that is not acceptable in the language, uh, actually in any construction. And that goes back to Chomsky net in 77, a variable cannot be banned, cannot be that set of a pronoun to its left. And this has been also examined exhaustively in the literature. But for Yoruba, this is not the case in the sense that if I were to use the same sentence, Tani Yare Feron, the sentence is good. Why? Because of the resultant pronoun. If it was a gap, then the sentence would not be good. If I say Tani Ya dash Feron dash, then the sentence will be bad. Uh, we, we can talk a little more about that if people are questioning about that later on. So what about non-subject position? Most of what I've shown so far are subject position are all things that form an island. So non-subject position generally, like I saw in the previous uh, slides, uh, there's a requirement for agreement. For example, in 30, uh, I know that you lunia didn't know, before. If I were to use a singular presumptive pronoun, then the sentence would be bad, as in 30 prime. I not to look ni I did not let you see would you be from that would be uh, incorrect in the language. So this is more like what Sapphire called uh arrow binding, like identity binding. If X bind uh alpha binds better, then alpha and beta must share all feature. If it is plural, then it has to be plural. If it's singular, it has to be singular, and so on and so forth. So uh, now I return to subject resumptive pronoun because this is what I will uh, spend more of, most of the time on today if I see a time on the clock. So for subject resumptive pronoun, this is not something very common in the literature on resumptive resumption. Uh, it's said actually to be rare for languages to use uh, subject resumptive pronouns, especially in local subject positions. Uh, as reported in Kina 1985, as of then, only Uchobo and Yiddish were found to use subject resumptive pronouns. But I can tell from my look at the data as available so far that there are many more languages that actually do use subject resumptive pronouns. But one thing that is standing out is that some of them do not require um, agreement between the subject and the, and the antecedent. Uh, an example of that re uh, replicated here is what I have on 31 and 31 prime, in which case the subject uh, resumptive pronoun is not required to agree with its antecedent in Yoruba. So uh, a gap is not allowed. And yet the uh, resumptive pronoun is not allowed, to, is not required to agree in person or number with the antecedent. So the question then is why? Uh, my assumption on this is that perhaps maybe the no agree resultant pronoun is actually not a real resultant pronoun, but maybe we can talk more about this later on. But overall, it's not following the trend of what has been presented when people talk about true resultant pronoun being resultant pronouns that are used in islands and none, and then intrusive ones, and those that are not used in island or those that do not have placed in the syntax of the language. This is synthetically required. It's just not required to be, to be in agreement. So, but it's still obligatory in the language to have it. And that is because I said before, for EPP purposes. Okay. And this is also being established in the literature, but for Yoruba, the more important thing to note is the, the kind of movement that uh, is using the language to derive focus constructions, uh, content question, and so on, which involves using null operators. And it's been established in the literature that null operators are not able to satisfy the EPP requirements. So to that extent, maybe that would actually explain why Yoruba uses a pronoun after such movement occurs in the language. Uh, so then there are two options. One, when you're moving uh, a, a phrase, does it, for the, for, does it skip the subject position or does it go uh, to the, through the subject position to the uh, spec TP, CP? Uh, like in, in this example in uh, 33, the movement goes through the uh, subject position and then go to the landing side at, on um, spec CP. The other option is, is for the derivation to go to the extent that it moves and then skips uh, spec 
TP. Why? Because it cannot even do it anyway. It cannot um, satisfy the EPP requirement of the subject position. It just goes directly to the uh, spec, spec CP position. Um, uh, my assumption in this uh, presentation is that the option in B is actually the more tenable one. Why? Because if it were the case that uh, 33 was the accepted version, which case it goes through uh, the subject position, and then you also go before it goes to the uh, spec CP, it might not be correct. Why? Because the language actually allows the non agree and the agree resumptive pronoun in the same position, like I showed before, only when null operator. Uh, movement is not available, that's when feature movement is used. And that is when you we have um, a non agree pronoun. And this is not peculiar to only a bar movement in the language. We also see the use of uh, non agree resumptive pronoun when, um, or something that looks like a like third person uh, singular pronoun in a bar, sorry, argument movement as we say down in, uh, in the examples uh, as we continue the uh, presentation. And this is also not peculiar to the language because other people also have made analysis uh, relating to null operator movement in other languages. And it's been found that elements that have no phonological content cannot satisfy the APP. So maybe that's the case for Yoruba as well, as it is in um, Danish and Icelandic. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is show that this is not restricted to only a bar positions that you can actually see the third person singular uh, pronoun being used, being matched in a sentence to satisfy the EPP of a, a sentence, the requirement in expletive constructions as well. So if you look at this sentence, it says, uh, in which case, the, the, the subject there is the third person singular horizontal uh, pronoun. Ojokwe aditi ebiyongpaide. Ojokwe ujongro nita. We also see a little more of this, uh, like an, uh, an evidence to show that it's not the case that it first of all land in spec TP before you go to spec CP. If you look at copy racing, copy racing is a little bit uh, like um, extended version of racing construction in languages, in which case uh, a, a phrase moves into from a thematic position to a non-thematic position. Uh, an example would be in 36, a day at your jokwe one year wo. A day at your jokwe one year wo. In this case, you have an agreement between uh, the subject that was moved and then the, uh, and, and the Resulting product that was used in their place. One is the same thing as Adia Teolu. And then that is in, in, in terms of number. But if I were to use a singular resulting pronoun there, then the sentence would be bad, as in 36C and 36D. And in both cases, uh, a third person singular pronoun is used to resume copy raising for plural, and the sentence is not acceptable. Sometimes maybe this will also be clouded by the fact that the tense is different in the lower clause, like in 36 double, uh, triple prime. Double prime is good with uh, plural, plural, but uh, singular plural is not good in 36 triple prime. Uh, that's how I follow up to that. So I'm just gonna skip that. Now, uh, the derivation for that will go as in 38, in which case it moves from uh, I, I'm uh, spec v, little VP to spec TP and then go to spec TP of the IR clause. So um, what I'm going to do briefly now before I conclude the presentation is give you examples of other languages in which uh, non agree resumptive pronoun are used. And then we'll see if you can uh, see a predictable pattern between them and what is applicable in Yoruba. One of those languages, Edo, which is uh, a neighboring language in Nigeria. Um, Ed, in Edo, just like in Yoruba, it is not acceptable to leave a gap in the subject position. So it is not acceptable to say ozo, oregwe, uyi, ewe. Whereas if we were to put a resumptive pronoun in that position in 40, ozo, ore, o, be, uyi, ewe, then the sentence is good. Uh, the same way, if you do, uh, 
something plural, uzo kere usagi, which is plural, is acceptable for you to use a non agreeing resumptive pronoun in place. Even though they don't agree in, in, in number, the sentence is still acceptable. So that patterns like Yoruba, in which case, uh, plural antecedent can uh, have a non agreeing resumptive pronoun that doesn't agree with them in person. And another is, example is from Essan, which is also a Nigerian language from the work of Role. This is more from our relative clauses and uh, subject position relative clauses. Example here is mene me o le nebe, in which case the, the antecedent was supposed to be first person, but the resultant pronoun is said to be third person. They don't agree in person, but the sentences are also good. This is a little bit, uh, maybe this little, needs a little more research because from what I read from this uh, work, it's actually not possible at all to use the first person there, which will have been a perfect agree. That's why they put Ime uh, with a star in that example in Essa. Uh, another example language is Akan, which is not a Nigerian language, it's from Ghana uh, in Asante Tui dialect, in which case, uh, there is uh, the non-agreeing uh, resultant pronoun uh, three, third person singular A is used in relative clause in number 43 and in number 44. In 43, uh, it's used for something singular, one, so everybody everybody's happy with that. But with 10 people, you expect that a plural resultant pronoun will be used, but it is not. The same A, which is the invariant, um, third person singular pronoun is used as resumptive pronoun in that position. Uh, I put in red on top of the screen to see SHA 2010 for a different view from another dialect. It reports that um, in the dialect that the, in the standard dialect or another dialect that they examined, that actually in relative clauses, resumptive pronouns are supposed to agree. So this could be a variant from a different dialect, but it's still acceptable in the language. Uh, in focus construction, you have a, a case like uh, in which case, this woman as opposed to the other one, we marry Kofi. There's agreement, one uh, singular third person, singular third person, everybody's happy. But if you look at 46, Nipan Dupe Na Wu here. In this case, 10 people is supposed to be plural, but the singular resumptive, uh, singular pronoun is used here. But I could also say though that it alternates with the plural, just like we saw in Yoruba, in which both are possible in this position. But the fact that the top person singular is possible also called into question the reason for agreement in that context. So, um, one thing that all of these languages have in common is that all the languages that do have uh, non agreeable pronoun uh, in the subject position that we have seen in this uh, presentation, Edo, uh, Yoruba, Esan, Akan, all of them do use the third person singular resumptive pronoun for uh, or, or what looks like it for APP purposes in uh, resumptive or uh, in expletive constructions. So that's why we have. For Yoruba, we say ujokwe, ujoronita, in which case the top of singular pronoun is what is used just to satisfy the subject requirement of the sentence. For Edo, oro ve is the top of singular pronoun is used to fulfill the requirement that there must be a subject in that position. Uh, the same thing applies to Esan, ujabe, any kubogbogan. In this case, the top of singular pronoun, the same one that is used in the non-agreeing position is used to provide a subject to that explicit construction. The same thing applies to a akan, in which case the top person singular pronoun that is used in the non, uh, as a non-agreeing resumptive pronoun is used to provide a subject in aye in which case uh, the first one is seen to be ready, it seems that Kofi is rich, and also even when you are plural, it's this second person singular pronoun in the subject position. But for the most part, this is like a expletive construction. So uh, in conclusion, basically what we have seen so far is that when uh, pronouns and gaps 
and in competition. Let's take Yoruba for example. A gap is preferred to the non-agreeing resumptive pronoun. And when that is not available, you can use an agreeing resumptive pronoun and then you can use the noun. And then like I said before, uh, because of this hierarchy of acceptance, Yoruba allows a uh, resumptive pronoun uh, that is not agreeing and those that are agreeing, but those that are not agreeing, I, I believe will be used only when the one that is not agreeing is not available. And I also said uh, in this discussion that uh, agree resultant pronoun is used uh, when it is necessary, but no agree resultant pronoun is used only for APP purposes, especially because the language actually gives the option for, for speakers to be able to use the agree resultant pronoun in that position. And we have seen also that uh, use of resultant pronouns in the language eliminates uh, island effect, uh, constant that not supposed to allow movement there's movement going on there, and the sentences are still good. Uh, it elevates with crossover effect in the language. Uh, sentences that are said to be bad because of variables that are born to their left are not, um, are not problematic. Why? Because of the uh, kind of movement, non operative movement that's used in the language, and also because, um, uh, like Safaya said in 1984, the pronoun has an external antecedent that neutralizes with crossover effect. Um, okay, let me pause and see uh, if people have questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let me unshare the screen. Yes. Um, Thank you for uh, this extensive talk with lots of data that uh, uh, allows us to think more about resumptive pronouns in different languages as well, actually, like what to test. And uh, I have a feeling Chris might have a question. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's-, it's, it's <laughs> I was just, right. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm blown away because, you know, I'm, I mentioned that I'm, had, found this resumptive pronoun and you know in Jarwan and so um, I'm just trying to think of how it all fits together and it's just this gives me so many more context to kind of play around with and you know as a phonologist primarily I don't think I would necessarily go looking for these things so um, it's just it it makes me wonder and I wonder what you think about this in the case of Jarwan where there's this kind of limitation on what can have a resumptive pronoun, right? It's limited to third person things, but then neither the th third singular or the third plural typical form is used. It's neutralized onto some, I don't know, default form or something like that that is entirely unlike either of them. So would we call, what, what kind of resumption would we call that? Or is it even resumption? I just don't even know. Uh what Okay, thank you. So basically, uh, one of the simple diagnoses that people use for resumption is that, okay, is this like a copy? Remember that uh, this is about, movement is about copy and deletion. So okay. when we copy uh, an XP, a pronoun is put, put in place of it. Do they have anything in common? If they do have something in common, that means, okay, maybe it's a partial deletion of the move XP, and then a pronoun is pronounced or there's a gap there. Mm. So in that case, if the uh, element that is said to be re the resumptive pronoun is related to what was moved, then by all means, it's a resumptive pronoun. Then we just have to say, okay, so why is it allowed in that context, but not in others? Mm -hmm. Just like I said before, one of the things I'm trying to understand here is why Yoruba allows a resumptive pronoun and non agree resumptive pronoun. And then somebody just reported, even in Essan, you, don't, you can't even use the agree form. I'm like, uh-uh. So... <laughs> You, you allow only the non agreed resumptive product, but you cannot use the one that agrees with what you move. So uh, wow. it's incredible, but it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, so in a way, what, then what you're saying is, so if this is this, you know, copy and deletion, but, and then there is an agreement of sorts, right? Because this pronoun yeah, this agree in person, but it doesn't necessarily agree in number. It's neutral for number. That's possible. If we have something in common, then that's good enough because 
partial deletion goes in different level for different languages. Uh -huh. But if you look at what Yoruba started with, mm. several languages are animates plus minus, gender plus minus, uh, case, and so on and so forth. Yoruba has only two of those. Yeah. So yeah. it's actually started on the cap. I don't let me say on the cap, but <laughs> lower than the other ones. And then you bleach some of those out. Yeah. But yeah. As long as there's something that's really related, you can, for recoverability, like you can still link it to the, the uh, position, I think, yeah, it could be resumptive. Great. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Well, I, I was uh, thinking about the languages that I know uh, in Southern okay. Bantu languages, and I was wondering whether there can be a typology of repairs that languages use for these kind of situation, like uh, when you have the uh, subject out or when you need to use the resumptive pronoun, it's maybe not directly touching on your non-agreeing resumptive pronoun stories or resumptive pronoun stories, but in the Southern Bantu languages that I look at, when you have a clapped construction, uh, then uh, the rest of the sentence becomes like a relative clause. Uh, so it's, it's also a language with a resumptive pronouns. So when you have uh, like complement clauses uh, and, or like, yeah, if you have complement clauses, I think uh, not complement clauses, if you move out of things, uh, sometimes okay. uh, um, yeah, there you don't have a pronoun, exactly like Yoruba, uh, but okay. uh, in certain uh, uh, clapped construction, you sometimes need uh, the resumptive pronoun. I think it's mostly on the, object if um, don't quote me but like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like no but problem. what i want to focus on was uh like in the yoruba case uh, in the craft construction uh the main clause still stays as a main clause right and you have all this uh, uh different uh the, especially the non-agreeing resumptive pronouns it seems like showing something uh, about what's going on and in so it's treating it almost like a real clause. The clause would stays uh, even though you clapped it something, right? So in order to uh, satisfy the requirement, probably your story about EPP now comes in, like yeah. it's still a clause, and but like now you don't have a subject. It's like in yeah, the clap. Yeah, there. Otherwise, yeah, the yeah. sentence is bad. Right, but in the Southern Bantu languages okay, you made a cleft construction, but then, oh, what should we do? We don't have an option of a non-agreeing resumptive pronoun in the subject cleft construction in particular. And in that case, they, not in that case only, but in most cases, they resolve this uh, uh, issue, well, like problem, uh, with uh, creating a relative clause construction. And you know that it's a relative clause, uh, uh, clause because the verb uh, uh, gets a suffix ka, Mm, uh, it uh, it realizes with the suffix ka, which basically indicates that's a relativized uh, uh, the verb in a relative clause. Okay. So I yeah, was wondering, I right. yeah. yeah, yeah, because like I said before, if you look at analysis that people pro propose in the literature, you see that languages approach this in different ways. For example, right. now there are languages that will use a baba c mm -hmm. a complement as well as baba because of that. Mm -hmm. Yoruba doesn't do that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's languages that will say, okay, because instead of that, why don't we just use anti anti agreement? Yoruba doesn't have that. So languages have different repair strategies, just like you said now that that leads right. to relativization. So I think maybe eventually somebody will sit down one day and then uh, get a huge grant to put all of this together because this is all everywhere now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know people have, who have spent decades working on this, but is evolving yeah. as yeah. so do you do you do you think that this uh, uh since you worked on this uh, in detail and you thought about this a lot uh, compared to these other strategies uh, do you think this uh, non resum non agreeing resumptive pronoun is something that's more on the unique side of the repairs uh, compared to the others, uh, because yeah. I've had a feeling like that, like, wow, this is, it felt, yeah, the EPP story is like, wow, you, you can do that, but it's, uh, would languages commonly actually? Uh, to an extent, them? yes. The other part of it is, how common is subject extraction, mm -hmm. especially like languages like Irish, they actually don't allow local subject extraction. 
There, mm -hmm. There's a uh, rule against that. But mm -hmm. uh, for languages that do allow local subject extractions, mm -hmm. do they leave a gap? In English, you can leave a gap and you're happy. Yeah. But in Yoruba and some other languages, you cannot leave a gap. For those that do not leave a gap, one of the um, most possible way to resolve it is to use the non agreement pronoun. And I've, I've given examples now, at least four languages. Actually, that's a fifth one, Igbo. Mm -hmm. So that means the more we look, the more we see, <laughs> we find more languages that will fall into the same uh, category as we Right. It. So I think it depends on, first of all, can you move from a local subject position to when you move out of it, is it possible to leave a gap and then say, okay, bye-bye, I can still recover. It is very close to me anyway. Right. But some other language you say, uh-uh, sorry, you are close, but I can't see you. So <laughs> put yeah. something there so that I can remember this was uh, in that position. The other option would just say, maybe there was no movement there at all. You just put a subject there, just like you do for uh, expletive constructions. But that, that's also debatable. Yeah. In that case, it's not a resumptive pronoun. It's just a pronoun that's used to create a subject just like an in expletive right. constructions. But like I said, there's still uh, the jury still out on that. Yeah. I was uh, wondering now suddenly, <clears throat> because mm -hmm. we talked about Irish, uh, the effect of word order in all these things, right? Because um, Yoruba is an SVO language, as far as I know. <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong. And then, yeah. and uh, Japanese and Korean are SOV, and uh, mm -hmm. we have subject originally in the first position. But um, in one of the language that we did field methods on at ICU, uh, we looked at Kiribati, and that language was a VOS. Uh, wow. language. Yeah, so... Okay. And they say VOS, and you don't need any pause before the subject. You just say it goes straight through. Because I was thinking that, oh, maybe it's dislocated, right? So, okay. uh, but like, you know, no prosodic thing that's going on. However, the verb is actually uh, uh, has some kind of pronominal element. Uh, it almost looks like uh, uh, he sees mosquitoes, John, let's say. Uh, okay. That's how they say it. And uh, mm -hmm. um, now suddenly wondering uh, whether this is uh, uh, an I didn't really explode it to, uh, during the uh, course, uh, and this agrees actually with the uh, oh, with plural, do, okay. versus, plural versus singular. They have a, a agreement A and R. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting agreement language because even for the relative clauses they uh, agree with the uh, head noun. Okay. They use different kind of relative marker, but. Uh, whether this is actually uh, an agreement or not. So it's not like a non-agreeing resumptive pronoun because it's actually agrees. Okay. Uh, but then mm, the fact that you need it in that position, uh, does it say something about the syntax of these languages? Like, uh, can you call it? Uh, uh, yeah. As far as I can tell, like I said before, people have been working on this for about 50 years and I'm sure, or let me say I'm sure, I can, uh, I guess, that people have looked at different word order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and as of now, it's not been pinned to, okay, yeah, this is only peculiar to SOV languages or SVO or OBS. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think that the word order will have effect on whether or not it's resumptive or it's agreeing or not agreeing. I think it, it depends on if we can sit down and then put everything on the table and then group them together where each one belongs. But Right. It's gonna, I, I, I believe strongly there's going to be other things accounting for it different from word order. Right. Otherwise, this, if it's word order, this is just about six. It might be easier to just say, okay, SVO, you are like that, OVS, you are like this, and then everybody's happy going to the parametric variations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying that uh, word order is affecting it, but like uh, how can uh, pronouns in different word order, especially when the subject is not in the beginning okay. and the initial position, how can we understand uh, those kind of agreeing subject? Because uh, oh, VOS... Oh, I you... think, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. actually uh, straightforward, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Like I was, when I was answering Chris' question the other time, remember mm -hmm. that movement is copy, mm -hmm. delete. So as long as it has things to do with each other, like, okay, yeah, you can recover this content from the where from the position where it was moved. Mm -hmm. Whether it is SOV or OVS will not matter, and then agreement will be featured in it because then it's, it's the same element that we find 
and the upper copy, the tail is, is cut off, or pronounced or not pronounced. This is a function of the PF. Mm. So it will not, it still will not matter whether it is uh, this side or that side. I would say agreement will be featuring on it, especially if it's the same copy anyway. I see. Yeah. Wow. We learned, uh, we always learn a lot. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we're getting yeah. there. Yeah, we are getting there. So let me uh, uh, finish this officially as a video. Uh, so just a, uh, a second, please. Uh, thank you, Say, one more time. And then thank I would like you. to thank the two co-organizers co who couldn't make it today, but now Professor Tomoyuki Yoshida and Professor Yoko Mizuta, uh, the assistant Shigeto Kamano and Paris Fleming, as well as the liaison IERS Institute of System Missionary Suzuki. Uh, this event was supported by the shared budget of ICU Research Institute, IERS, and LingLab at ICU. The next colloquium will be on February 12th, so one week from now, and Daisuke Shinagawa from Tokyo University of Foreign Studies and Luz Martin from SOAS will share the research. It will be too early for uh, you two because it's going to be 4 a.m. in the East, wow. East Coast time, <laughs> but uh, 6 p.m. in Japan Standard Time uh, because... Mm, uh, Lutz is in uh, the Greenwich Mean Time uh, uh, zone. So we are uh, having a slightly different time that day. And uh, further information can be found on the ICU link website. Uh, the recording will now be stopped. <laughs>